Hi folks and welcome back to the vlog. This week in the house is the magnificent Hester Berry. Hi Hester. Hiya. Uh, she's going to run us through her pre three pro tips, the things that she wished she knew when she was starting out or has learned along the way. Um, so let's kick off with your first one, Hester. Um, income, your, your thoughts on income. This is quite an interesting one. Yeah, so I, I, I think I've spoken to a lot of people that have been put off being an artist because of the instability of it and the, you know, the uncertainty of the income or, or um, your standard of living. So I think um, I learned to accept quite early on just to, to be satisfied with little and not to, you know, not just to, ha accepting what you need, being happy with the, the essentials and what allows you to survive and paint and be happy and not a lot more. And actually, that's quite um, liberating. So. Yeah, I think cutting your cloth according to your sort of income is really important. I know one of my painters lives in a caravan because they didn't want to get involved in um, uh, having to have a mortgage and all the responsibilities and this, that and the other. Um, so they made life choices that they would keep things very simple so that they could do the thing they love rather than have to do that and do something else as well. I'm always, I've am always i always felt a bit surprised when people are like sort of dabbling with art and then they say, no, I'm not, I couldn't do it full time because it doesn't bring in enough money. And it seems like a shame to me, like, but you have to be the right sort of person. I know you, you have to sort of, work with what you need and if it's not for you then it could be too nail biting i've had to take other jobs sometimes as well just to supplement it um but it's and it, it's sort of it it makes you question whether you're like really an artist if you have to move on to something else but hmm. i mean most artists i know have had to do something else i when i was in the music business i had to do the same thing i had to do some editing of film stuff like that when i couldn't write music great um which brings me off <laughs> talking about actually funnily enough uh this second subject you've got here i talked about in a newsletter recently which is rejection and how to deal with it yeah um it's uh, it, you just have to be quite thick-skinned i guess because i know someone tell i remember somebody telling me when i when i was studying my degree somebody came in to give a bit of professional practice advice and they said expect you know, apply for everything. So competitions, funding, um, opportunities, it, apply for everything you can, more than you can handle because you're only likely to get 10% of what you apply for, if that. So I've entered a lot of competitions and some of them have come off and it's been great and it's helped my career, but some of them haven't. And it can be, it can be, especially if you get a few of them all in one go, it can be really depressing and you, you've, you need some kind of, I think artists need reassurance a lot of the time. We're a, um, a dainty bunch and we need telling that we're great. So it's difficult to cope with, but you just have to, you have to know that that's the norm, I think. Let other people tell you that it's the norm to be rejected a lot and maybe you can cope with it. I think remembering this um, artist who was further on in her career has, ha has, every time I do get a rejection, I think of that and I think it's okay, that's like expected. It's not just me, it's what you have to, um, live with you've got to shoot for whatever you can and i agree with you you've got to really open yourself up i know in my musical days i used to fire music out to every single company and try this that and the other and you know rejection can be brutal too i think that's one people people don't understand you know i mean i used to get the don't give up your day job emails and i find i'm now very respectful in my replies to artists because you know, it's within our industry, it's, in, in, it's important to encourage each other to keep going, even if I might not like an artist's work or want to take on or don't have room for an artist, doesn't need to say you need to be rude, but you will get those rude emails or, or be completely ignored from time to time. Yeah, I mean, being ignored is definitely the norm. There's ways of doing it as well that help you, like sending sensible cover letters and being succinct and making it easy for the person you're approaching. Mm. um to see your work you know if you have to fiddle around with loads of links people probably won't bother or you know yeah. but but if it's for like competitions it's it's really wise to enter competitions because it if you do get them it shows that somebody else it shows you and the world that somebody else puts some 
value on your work. Even with that, you have to pick and choose because it can be really expensive entering lots of competitions. Do you, do you find you get replies from these competitions all the time or, or do these just ignore um, you as well if you're not in the finals? Most places you seem to get um, a kind of automatic, e not an automatic email, but a, an email that will go out to everybody that wasn't successful, that's tactful and and encouraging but apologetic i i've kind of just taught myself to you know, be pessimistic and then you're pleasantly surprised maybe that's a bad that's not a very positive way of looking at it but i if, if i i know the date that the results come out i'll check my emails and i'll expect and accept before i open the email that it's 90 percent likely that i won't have got anywhere right and then if that's the case then it can just wash over me and if I have got somewhere, then I can do a double take and it's quite a nice surprise. <laughs> but there's been a couple of things where quite big competitions and I didn't get in, but they were really, I got an individual response, which was nice, okay. but surprising. Sometimes That's big brilliant. institutions also. Well, Some fantastic tips. Really, really interesting. I, I didn't know about the competition myself. Um, your last tip is about work balance. What's that one then, Esther? Yeah. Um, you have to keep pushing yourself, I think. I mean, it's lovely painting. I really enjoy painting, but I don't want to get stuck into being just happy with what I'm doing. Like, you don't want to get too comfortable because then you're not growing. There are artists that I've seen who just stay the same. Their work doesn't change from decade to decade. Hmm. And I start to find that, as a viewer, I find that a bit boring. But as an artist, I would find that unfulfilling. After my MA, that was very... Um, they pushed very hard to, you know, to get you to progress and question everything you do. And, and it was, it was fun and it was a good learning thing, but eventually I was, it was getting too disparate and I was trying to fit myself in the art world rather than just thinking about the, the work I was making. This is no good. I'm just going to go back to painting and enjoy painting, saying nothing, not trying to impress my previous teachers or classmates, just paint and enjoy it and actually that was really important perhaps I needed all the other stuff that I'd gone through before in order to go back to just painting everybody's cooking with water I mean nobody's creating anything revolutionary different but I think it certainly as you start out you know I did as a musician tried to copy my the the works of my you know peers and people that I loved and and stuff like that and then I found that when I did it I did it in my own style and that took me into a whole new realm yeah exactly mm. and and being influenced by not just um certainly not just similar painters also not just painters but maybe even not just artists music has influenced me a lot and right. um, and you know literature and and all different sorts of art forms can okay. can can draw i think to be honest life letting let, thinking of, thinking about life in terms of being an influence maybe that's getting a bit too nebulous but letting anything influence that's why we're, in my sketchbook i have my sketchbook on me all the time and i i you know write notes if i go to galleries mm. but i also just I mean, I might write shopping lists or to-do lists. Everything goes into my sketchbook so that it's my, uh, it, it's everything that's influencing me. Hopefully. Yeah. Well, I mean, I think they're brilliant, brilliant tips. All three that we've we've not experienced before, and I think they're really going to be helpful. So thanks so much, Hester, for everything. Really great to speak to you as always. Looking forward to our exhibition. Yes. <laughs> and yeah. uh, I'm going to leave everybody now with a run through of. Hester's amazing work, what she does with lice is extraordinary. Um, and uh, we'll see you next week. Thanks a lot, Hester. See you again. Thank you. Bye. Bye bye.